Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. Welcome to 63 degrees north high coast of the northern part of Sweden. We have minus 19 degrees Celsius right now and I'm getting ready for a night of imaging. Thank God I have my miniature home observatory. I'm going to set up my image acquisition for tonight. I've actually already captured a few objects, but uh, now I'm going to program a sequence before going to bed. So I'm going to start on a new target and I'm also going to collect some more data on an older target. So I'm going to start by clicking the sequencer and open target set because I've saved, uh, saved some targets here. Uh, NGC is 7822. I'm going to open that. So I have that as my first target. I'm then going to go to framing and I've searched for the jellyfish nebula IC443. And I've loaded uh, that image and I've set my composition to something that I like. Before I can add this to my sequence, I need to go back to the sequence and add a new empty target. Uh, I then go back to the framing assistant and I will click this little arrow and say update existing target in sequence and then I'm going to select my empty target. Now you can see that I have my previous target of NGC 7822 and my new target IC443. I want to start with IC443 so I'm going to select that and I'm going to click this uh, move target left. So I see 443. I'm going to configure this target now. So I'm going to say I want to slew and I want to send to target and I want to start guiding. I, I also want autofocus on start and on filter change and after 10 exposures. I'm at binning 2. I also want to dither on every frame and I want to start with H alpha. I don't know how much time I have on this target. I'm going to say 300 seconds. And now the calculation is including the uh, frames that I have here. So I'm temporarily going to disable those. And that will let me see uh, how much time I have on this target. So I want to say 30. That is until 336. 
this morning. I don't know if that is going to be possible. So I'm going to say 25 light frames. I will continue that some other night. I'm ready to start my sequence now. And I'm going to unpark my telescope first. And the reason that I am not using Nina for park and unpark is that uh, I haven't configured the default park position to the observatory park position that I'm using since I must position the telescope in a certain way in order to be able to close the roof of my observatory. And Nina cannot handle different park positions, just the default one. So I'm going to click on park here and I'm going to start this sequence. The telescope, as you can see, is slewing to the target. And when it uh, has reached the target, it will take an image and do a plate solve in order to try and resolve the position on the night sky and match that with the database and make adjustments if necessary. And it is now running through the autofocus. Now when the autofocus has completed, it is starting with the uh, exposures. And first out is uh, the Jellyfish Nebula IC443. And now we're waiting for the first light frame to arrive. And there you have it. It is the Jellyfish Nebula and HA. Anyway, I'm going to let this run now and go to bed. I have work tomorrow. It is a few days after the evening of image acquisition for Jellyfish Nebula. I had to throw away a lot of frames due to clouds and the fact that the jellyfish is low on the horizon for me, or at least in comparison to other targets. I was left with six hours of total integration. And as you can see here, the uh, frames really suffer from bright, bright halos with the uh, very bright star here on top of the uh, nebula. I'm hoping that this will somewhat be reduced and that I can process some of this halo effect out until I can afford to get some three nanometer filters, if that will make a difference 
when dealing with a star as bright as this one. The S2 has actually most data, over uh, 30 frames uh, for this. And I think I was left with only 15 frames of uh, HA data. And that is unfortunate. I will have to collect more data on this target at another date. For the linear phase, I'm only going to show you some uh, HA frames just to speed things up a bit. For this uh, first frame, I have actually already run uh, the dynamic crop and the dynamic background extraction and linear fit to equalize the brightness between the different frames. After that, I normally run deconvolution, but in this case, I thought I'd try out the new blur exterminator. We are going to take a look at the frame on the left, uh, that is before blur exterminator, and the frame on the right is after blur exterminator. And you can already see here on the stars that we have some significant star reduction and sharpening of the stars in this image. And we're going to zoom in on this area. And you can see that we have achieved some great sharpening here of this uh, non-stellar structures in the image. So I'm really impressed with the uh, blur exterminator so far. As a final step in this linear phase, I also did some multiscale linear transformation to remove some of the noise in the background here. We can compare it to this image. And you can see on the left here, you have a lot of noise. And on the right, we have eliminated a lot of that noise. So happy with that. The first step for me after the Conversion over to the non-linear phase is to make starless versions of the frames. So I have my S2 in starless. I have my O3 in starless as well. And I have my HA in starless. And I've also made a range mask and adjusted the background a little bit here to remove some of the residual gradients in this image. Now you can still see the very prominent halos here from stars in this uh, image. And I would like to have uh, had a, a lot more data, especially for the O3 here. You can see that we have a lot of issues with noise here. Moving on in the non-linear phase. I did an SHO combination using uh, pixel math and ended up with this image. You can see that we have a lot of uh, purple uh, and green colors that uh, we don't want. So I um, did some corrections to the background here. And I also ran the SCNR feature to remove uh, the green and purple magenta colors from the image ended up with this. I did some further color adjustments using a color mask to achieve uh, some more blue color and also uh, a bit more red in uh, this uh, area of the image. 
Continuing on with some noise reduction using the multiscale linear transformation and uh, unsharp mask and denoise. Uh, those three are very effective uh, tools, as you can see here. This is before and this is after. We can zoom in on this area here. So you can see that we have uh, sharpened and removed a lot of the noise in the image. I also did a dark structure enhancement on this area of the image to further improve the uh, contrast between the dark and lighter areas. Finishing off with some uh, final adjustments, adding a bit more depth to the blue color in here and also enhancing the uh, contrast of the uh, colors in this image. Now I uh, extracted the HA stars earlier uh, in the processing of this image. Now, since I used Blur Exterminator earlier in the linear phase of the processing workflow, the uh, stars uh, is already reduced and uh, sharpened. So I didn't have to reduce them further. That is something that I normally do before adding the stars back. But in this case, I could take the HA stars and my final starless image and combine them using pixel math to end up with this final image here. So I'm fairly uh, pleased with this image. There is, uh, I didn't uh, target the halos. I could have used clone stamp or I could have taken uh, open this image in Photoshop or something to further address the halo but I couldn't notice them on the sides here and it's not too bad around uh, the bright star here I kind of like the effect actually but this image of course could have benefit from a lot more HA and O3 data. I must say that I am very pleased with the results uh, from the blur exterminator and I'm guessing that I'm going to use that process uh, moving on uh, with my journey into photographing the stars and deep sky objects instead of the deconvolution in uh, PixInsight. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to be sure not to miss out on upcoming content. If you want to support me and the making of these videos there is an option listed in the video description. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.